Throughout the Second World War, there were many men and women who worked inside of the concentration camps as guards. Many came from all walks of life, and some would leave normal lives to become brutes who would go down in history as some of the most evil people of World War II. Auschwitz became the deadliest concentration camp established by the SS, and over one million people were executed and were killed inside the largest camp, and some of the guards that worked there became notorious for their evil. Irma Graves was known as a beautiful beast, and she was known for shooting prisoners with her pistol, and also patrolling with a large dog that would attack the inmates, but there were many other sadists who revelled in making the lives of thousands a complete misery. One of the most brutal and barbaric guards that worked at Auschwitz on the 28th of May 1946 was led towards a gallows inside of Landsberg prison, and he was flanked by many American guards who then handed him over to an executioner. Otto Moll was in his 20s when he worked at Auschwitz, but he became a notorious executioner himself, who it was believed was personally responsible for the deaths of around 20,000 innocent people. But what is the story of his crimes and also his execution? Join us today as we look at the execution of the Butcher of Auschwitz, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Otto Moll was born on the 4th of March 1915, inside of the Grand Duchy of mecklenburg strelitz and he was born at a time when the First World War was engulfing Europe. He would have had a rather ordinary upbringing, but then, before he became a member of the SS, Moll would work as a gardener. But he would join Himmler's evil paramilitary organisation on the 1st of May 1935, but the specific part of the SS he would join was rather bizarre to begin with. He became part of a battalion orchestra, and they would entertain other SS men inside of barracks and training centres. However, in January 1937, when he was heading back from a performance with the orchestra, the truck carrying he and his fellow SS musicians got into an accident, and one of his bandmates was killed. Otto Moll with this had a severe bang on the head, and he suffered from a head trauma, and he also went blind in his right eye. Some historians have claimed that this injury led to him having further problems that changed his personality, that made him more deadly and psychotic. Some have gone further saying that the bang on the head led to Otto Moll becoming a psychopath, and some have said he was a man from his injury that was mentally and physically ill. Shockingly, others have said that he should have been bizarrely excused from some of his actions, and one German historian states how Otto Moll was exploited by the SS, and that they manipulated him to make him more of a monster. But following his recovery, he became a member of the SS Death Heads Unit, who were in charge of overseeing and running the concentration and extermination camps inside of Nazi Germany. He was rather well thought of in the SS, and he would go back to gardening, and would oversee, inside of a concentration camp, a work detail who would look after the grounds, and who would act as gardeners. He would in 1941 move from Sachsenhausen to Auschwitz, which was expanding on a huge scale. Rudolf Hess had been given permission by Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, to make a huge concentration camp, where he would try and murder as many people as he could. To do this, Hess needed large amounts of guard staff, and many men and women were transported to Auschwitz to work as guards, and they would become completely barbaric and brutal. Otto Moll was then, at Auschwitz, placed in charge of the prisoners who would dig the mass graves for the executions that would take place. There were many different execution methods used inside of the camp, and shooting was a commonly used method. But Otto Moll, for over three and a half years, worked in other roles at Auschwitz, and he would then become the director of employment services at Auschwitz-Birkenau. In 1944, he was a man who oversaw all of the crematoria in Birkenau, the main extermination centre inside the camp. He was closely linked to Rudolf Hess, and the pair would together be decorated by Hitler, and awarded the War Merit Cross first class with swords. Otto Moll would justify whatever he asked of inmates by screaming, an order is an order, and he was a barbaric and brutal man. As 1944 would come around, it was clear that the crematorias at Auschwitz were not big enough to burn all the bodies of those who were being killed in the gas chambers. Huge deportations were taking place, as people from across Europe were sent to Auschwitz to be killed. But it was Otto Moll who would force the inmates to dig large open-air pits so they could burn the bodies inside of these, as the ovens and crematories could not cope. He also converted a farmhouse to become another gas chamber. One former worker who was overseen by Otto Moll would describe his actions. He said, 
At that time, on average, around 18,000 Hungarians were murdered daily at Birkenau. Transports would come from dawn till dusk, one after another, and around 20% of those arriving were sent to the camp. They were recorded in series A and B. The rest were gassed and incinerated in the crematorium furnaces. In cases where there were not enough prisoners, they were executed by shooting and burned in pits. As a rule, a gas chamber was only utilised for groups bigger than 200 people, because it was uneconomical to use it for smaller groups. It sometimes happened that during executions by shooting, some prisoners put up a fight or children cried, and then Oberschar Führer Moll would throw these people into the burning pits alive. I personally witnessed the following scenes. Moll ordered a naked woman to sit on the corpses near a pit, while he shot at prisoners and threw them onto the burning pit, ordering the woman to jump and sing. Of course she did so, in hopes of saving her life. After executing everybody, Moll shot this woman, and she was then incinerated. On another occasion, Moll found a few rings and a watch on a boy from our group. He halted him at the crematoria, had him thrown into the furnace, started a fire using paper, and then got him out, hanged him by his arms, tortured and interrogated him, to find out where he'd gotten the items found on him. Of course he told him everything, identified the prisoner who had given these to him, and then he was set on fire, from the waist down, and was ordered to run towards the wires where he was executed. More workers continued to testify about his evil. Another member of the Sonderkommando said, Hauptschaff Führer Moll was the most degenerate of the lot. Before his arrival at the camp, he was in charge of the work at the bunkers, where they incinerated the gas victims in pits. Then he was transferred for a while to another section. In view of the preparation necessary for the reception of convoys from Hungary in 1944, he was put in charge of all crematoria. It is he who organised the large-scale extermination of people arriving in these convoys. Just before the arrival on the Hungarian transports, he ordered pits to be dug alongside Crematoria 5 and restarted the activity of Bunker 2, which had been lying idle in its pits. In the yard of the crematory, there were notices on posts, with inscriptions telling the new arrivals from the transports that they were to go to the camp where work was waiting them, but that they first had to take a bath and undergo disinfection. For this, it was necessary for them to undress and put all their valuables in baskets, specifically placed for this purpose in the yard. Moll repeated the same thing in his speeches to the new arrivals. There were so many convoys that sometimes it happened that the gas chambers were incapable of containing all the new arrivals. The excess people were generally shot, one at a time, and often by Moll himself. On several occasions, Moll threw people into the flaming pits alive. He also practised shooting people from a distance. He ill-treated and beat Sonderkommando prisoners, treating them like animals. Those who were in his personal service told us that he used a piece of wire to fish out gold objects from a box, containing the jewels taken from new arrivals, and took them off in a briefcase. Often the objects left by the people who came to be gassed, he took furs and different types of food, in particular fat. When he took the food, he smilingly said to the SS around him that one had to take advantage before the lean years came. Under his direction, the Sonder Commando was strengthened and increased to around 1,000 prisoners. Further accusations against Moll would state that the head of the crematorium, Moll, once took a child away from its mother. I saw it in crematoria 4. There were two huge pits where the corpses were burned. He threw the child into the boiling corpse fat that had collected in ditches around the pit and then said to his assistant, Now I'll eat till I'm satisfied. Now I've done my duty. Another way to satisfy Moll's perverse murder lust was the killing of little children, who he threw alive into the boiling human fat at the front of the side pits. When the camp commandant or other SS commanders appeared at the site of the crematoria, however Moll controlled himself and subdued his abnormal tendencies. Then the machinery of murder took its customary factory-like course, without there being any special excesses. He was a completely brutal man, who would slaughter and kill the most vulnerable including children. It was said he was very scary and also jealous, that one time he was overheard saying that if Eichmann ordered him to execute his own family, then he would have done it. He would burn children alive, and would shoot women, who were then forced to strip, as well as beating and bludgeoning prisoners to death with clubs and iron bars. He also set dogs on people as well as throwing prisoners against the electric fences. He was a barbaric executioner, and he murdered himself 3,000 prisoners with his execution squad, 
they were said to have been very dangerous. But as the Second World War turned against the Germans, Auschwitz-Birkenau would be abandoned by the SS in January 1945, and Otto was then sent to Dachau, where he arrived with a group of prisoners on a death march. He was then arrested by American forces, who would liberate Dachau, and he would later admit that he wanted Auschwitz bombing, and he wanted to kill the remaining prisoners. In November 1945, Otto Moll was placed on trial in front of an American military court in what was known as the Dachau Trials. What was shocking was that he was only tried for his actions inside of Dachau, and not what he had done at Auschwitz, and this was not considered. He was accused of shooting and executing people who collapsed during the death march, and for this he was sentenced to death for the executions of 26 people. But he was transferred to Landsberg Prison to await his execution. On the 28th of May 1946, he was taken from his prison cell and was led to a courtyard where a scaffold was there and he was then led up the stairs. Quickly an executioner took possession of Otto Moll, who placed a noose around his neck and also a black cap. Then he was placed over the trap door and this was released. Otto Moll was a brutal and barbaric guard who worked inside of Auschwitz and was responsible for the executions and deaths of thousands. 20,000 people, it's believed, were killed by Moll and his group of executions and death squads, but he was a man who was unhinged and who himself was executed. But his work at Auschwitz was not taken into account, and he was only executed for the crimes he participated in whilst he was for a short time at Dachau. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.